Okay, so we're going to begin by um, shucking the corn. And basically, you just kind of pull the leaves off the corn here. Um, I think anybody that's actually dealt with raw corn, you just, you know how to do this. I shouldn't have to explain it too much. Now, I'm going to keep the corn silk. Uh, I like to use the corn silk for different projects, um, specifically um, corn husk dolls. And uh, oftentimes, I like to just pull out the corn husk, the, the, the corn silk here, and I'll just set this aside and dry it out. Um, oftentimes, you can also uh, flatten the leaves, but you'd need like a nice flat rock. I have a flat marble slab that I use uh, for leather working, and uh, I uh, can just kind of take the leaves here and flatten them out and have them dry flat and then I can use them as part of making the corn husk doll but I'm not going to do that today I'm just going to save with the corn silk so basically that's it um, I'm going to spend some time uh, I'm going to just be shucking and no jiving right so I'm going to be shucking this corn and I'm going to be doing in this batch I'm going to be doing 12 ears or a dozen of corn a dozen ears of corn so that's it, pretty mundane. Okay, so I have shucked six of them, uh, six ears of corn, and um, I went and washed them off, try to wash off some of the silk if you don't want that. But the thing is, is with corn silk, is that it is um, very good for you. Um, you it dried especially, you can make a tea out of it. It's got tons and tons of health benefits, anti-inflammatory, um, good for cholesterol. Uh, it's been used traditionally um, for many, many thousands of years uh, as, a, as, an, or as an herbal remedy. So um, you might want to save your corn silk. Um, I'll leave a link below on uh, uh, what you can do with the corn silk and how it's used and such like that. So a little bit of corn silk, in other words, in other words, what I'm trying to say is a little bit of corn silk isn't going to uh, hurt you. So anyhow, um, what I'm going to do next to start to process these is I want to, to make this easier, is I want to cut these in half. All right. So I'm just take my blade here and let's cut that in half like that. The reason why is because we can stand these up like that and it's shorter. They're easier to manage. Okay. So when, when we cut these like so, all right. So now what we can do next is, is we're gonna need to, I'm gonna get a bowl here, get a bowl all good and ready. And uh, what I do, and many people know how to do this, but for those that don't, you just, the reason why I cut this in half is to make it easier. It's a lot easier to do this next step um, than balancing it precariously on its tip. So make it flat, and then you want it to shave off the kernels. You're not trying to cut the cob, but you want to shave off the kernels like so. And then you can turn it, shave off the kernels, turn it, shave off the kernels. So however you choose to do it, you don't want too much of the cob at all. It doesn't really hurt at all, but there you go. So it's real, real easy, real easy to get those kernels off and then you can discard the cob if you like. Um, I've, once, I've once made a corn cob pipe. Um, I may revisit that and show how to do that because um, there is a such there is a such thing as herbal uh, smoking blends. So um, I don't smoke myself, but I just wanted to. I'm, I'm a Popeye, the Sailor Man um, fan, so he had a corn cob pipe. So I uh, tried to make one and actually succeeded. Succeeded. <laughs> it worked. Um, so at anyhow, um, I'm going to get rid of the cob here like that. So that's how you um, can shave off the uh, kernels that you're going to need. So that's my next task is to um, shuck them, shuck the ears of corn, uh, and then cut them in half, and then shave off the kernels. All right, so this is what um, six... Uh, decent size, medium sized um, ears of corns yielded. Uh, so, uh, and this is raw, right? So I'm gonna talk about that for just a second here. So, um, as I've been doing this, I found out that um, there's 
um, some differences uh, in common sense would say such dictate such things but uh, definitively uh, there is some differences between drying or processing your the, the corn raw versus um, taking uh, an ear of corn shucking it and boiling it for a little bit parboiling it uh, or in, for a little bit and then uh, uh, shaving off the kernels and drying it uh, the texture and the color and the smell is different so you know if it's uncooked it tends to be a little bit the color isn't as vibrant of the cornmeal and I'm talking about the cornmeal so the cornmeal isn't as vibrant uh, it's a little duller um, it tends to be a little finer when you uh, grind it up uh, and uh, but 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 it's really really sweet really really sweet tasting when it's uh, cooked the color is a lot brighter uh, the cornmeal is brighter uh, the cornmeal texture is more grainier a little bit more coarse uh, and then uh, the it's 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 sweet but it's not as sweet in, in comparison so um, I'm just gonna kind of give that to you so basically for taste wise if you want something really sweet in your cornmeal then uh, process it raw uh, if you don't want if you want something with less sweetness but a little bit more coarseness uh, cook it first and then process it and then if you're worried about color um, then you want if you want some bright color to your cornmeal then you'll want to uh, cook it um, if you don't care about the color then just use it raw so uh, that's kind of a rule of thumb that, that from my experience uh, you may have different I mean different regions will have different types of corn different species of corn so uh, here in the upper Midwest and this species of corn I don't know but I believe this is this yellow sweet corn as it's called uh, is this is what we're using and this is the results I've gotten so what I'm going to do is I'm going to go and I'm going to shuck these I'm going to uh, cook these for just a little bit I'm not going to cook them thoroughly but I'm going to cook them a little bit and then um, I'm going to mix them because uh, I like both so I'm just going to mix everything together so there will be cooked and uncooked kernels uh, that will create this batch of cornmeal okay before I put these uh, into the pot to boil these um, I just wanted to kind of give you um, a yield number so these ears of corn are coming out consistently like eight inches long on average and so what I'm finding out is that uh, for that size approximately for a six e six ears of corn is going to yield uh, about three cups of dried kernels when they're all dehydrated and everything so six is going to go down to three cups and then uh this when with this let's say this was dried so the the this if this were three cups of dry kernels would yield a cup and a half so it's going down by half corn has a lot of water in it so just so that you know so for every uh six e e ears you're going to end up getting a cup and a half of cornmeal basically so basically a third of of what um of what uh you you would expect so just wanted to give you that we'll we'll, we'll see how that uh turns out when we get there but right now i'm gonna put these in the pot okay so we have um our corn both cooked and uncooked all mixed in this is approximately like 10 cups of corn uh in this bowl and that's combined so this is that uh, those 12 ears yielded 10 I this is an approximate I'm pretty sure per ear it was probably about a cup or or so or even a half a cup uh, per ear you know you can do the math on that obviously but um, this, this yielded approximately 10 maybe 11 10 and a half cups uh, it might be actually 12 if I took the time to actually really kind of shave off and measure accurately but anyways it's a lot of corn so we're going to um, pull out our dehydrator and uh, now again this is cheating I mean I, I because of what's going on these days with our uh, with this uh, plan I mean this uh, sca uh, scam I mean this uh, pandemic um, uh, I'm doing a lot more resilient living videos versus primitive I am going to get back to that I have some couple of 
ideas, some things that I do want to do. Um, <clears throat> but right now, for the immediate need, is, is the purpose of this video really is about preserving food and making food stretch out. Um, corn is relatively, at least where I live, in the upper uh, Midwest, it's relatively cheap. You can get six ears of corn for a buck, right? You can almost, maybe not nowadays, but you can almost find a dollar on the street, you know, and you got six ears of corn. Now, how do you make that stretch, you know, or how do you uh, turn it into something that'll last for a, a little longer uh, storage-wise, etc., etc.? So this is kind of the main purpose of this video. So um, I'm pulling out my modern dehydrator. Um, you could build a frame with a screen to protect it from to protect from insects and bugs and lay it out in the sun and and uh, as long as it's covered and screened there's plenty of airflow going through uh, you could lay you could lay it out in the sun and let it the sun dehydrate it you know probably over the course of a week as long as it doesn't rain or if you have a really nice hot dry place like your garage um, it's very people's garages tend to be very humid or very just dry dry hot garages and stuff or sheds uh, you can let them sit out there in a, for a week or so so there's ways to do this um, primitively if you will um, but for this video we're just going to focus on expediency and getting the job done so um, I got a dehydrator it's a Nesco brand uh, I love these things dehydrate you can make beef jerky out of them you can you can you know, dried fruit all kinds of stuff so I would highly recommend you invest in a dehydrator so anyways um, what I'm going to do here is I'm just going to spread this out oh by the way this dehydrator comes with this 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 little accessory for finer materials that slips over the top right now a lot of these kernels would just slip through the cracks right which wouldn't be a big deal I mean, we want all want it in the same place as long as it dries but this makes it more convenient so things don't fly the uh, uh, cross-contaminate if you're trying to keep things separate. So I'm just going to lay this out. So I've got a few trays that they need and then they stack. So I've got a few trays. I'm just going to take these, the corn here, and just lay this out on the dehydrator. And then uh, when I've got this all kind of laid out, then I'm going to go to uh, the next um, layer and do the same thing and just kind of stack them up until we're all done. All right, so we got three trays with these kind of laid out here, and um, I've got one more tray, and I'm going to use this tray here actually to um, dry out this corn cob. So um, that's what I'd like to do um, because, uh, like I said, I want to see if I can show how to make a corn cob pipe. So I want to—I'm kind of pre-prepping this, uh, so we'll see how this turns out. Maybe it'll fit, maybe it won't. I don't think this will fit. It's kind of a big one, that's why I chose it. All right, if it doesn't fit, oh well, we'll just, uh, I'll just do this separately. But anyways, I'm saving this for you guys for a later video. Uh, keep that in mind. Anyhow, uh, going to, this is the cover. This fits right over the top, like so. And um, it's a Nesco brand dehydrator. And uh, the highest uh, that it goes is 150 degrees Fahrenheit, and the lowest is 95 degrees Fahrenheit. Uh, 95 degrees or low, lowest is really good for um, like flowers and that sort of thing, real delicate. Um, beef jerky and, and more denser uh, material you want um, at higher. So anyhow, I'm gonna go ahead and turn this on. I got it means I gotta plug it in. Uh, they don't have an on and off switch on these things, so you gotta plug them in. Just a second. There we go. Now I'm gonna turn this up to, since we got a lot, I'm gonna just turn this all the way up. I'll check on it periodically, but it usually takes 12 hours, 12 to eight hours to, to dry the corn out uh, using this method, using this machine. So basically I'll be seeing you tomorrow uh, and we'll get to grinding this up into cornmeal. All right, so it's the uh, next day, rather, it's been um, nine to 10 hours-ish uh, at 155 degrees Fahrenheit, uh, dehydrating our corn using this um, Nesco brand 
food dehydrator. So I'm um, just going to set this aside, the top, and here is the dried corn. So again, of course, you're taking the moisture out of it so it shrinks, so we have a lot of room left, um, or more room than we did before, but the, they're all dried. Um, basically, this is something I just do kind of overnight, that way you're not sitting there watching paint dry, so to speak. And um, or if you start at the beginning of the day in the morning, you start to dry probably by, you know, eight, eight, nine hours, ten hours later, you'll you'll be ready to grind up for the evening, probably even for evening meal. Um, if you have one of these automatic uh, modern um, dehydrating machines now uh, to do this primitively, I'm really not quite sure how long that would take. Um, oftentimes uh, the corn would be hung up and air dried so yeah traditionally corn would be hung up like this and you know a hot sunny day or inside your tent or lodge or teepee uh, or wigwam you hang up your corn and the heat from the fire and just the ambient heat and uh, would dry your corn out successfully probably a little bit more quicker I have this in the house and we didn't have the air conditioner on so um, not very primitive at all and it's taken a while for this to dry but this would be one way um, that corn was dried uh, for use for later to make to grind it to meal and whatnot so uh, I'm just trying this out it'll take a while um, and that's okay that's okay so but just to give you an idea um, that, that you know and as long as it's inside you can hang that up and it should be fine as long as you don't have any pets or anything they're gonna cut trying to go after it um, you hang it out in your garage, uh, again, away from any walls, uh, vermin like mice and rats are good climbers, so if you hang it up against the wall in a nice dry place like a garage or shed, um, your corn will get eaten, so you need to hang it kind of in the middle uh, somewhere in the rafters, from the rafters so that the, the vermin can't get at it. So anyways, um, here's our dried corn. The next step I'm going to do is... Um, we're going to consolidate this and we're going to grind it up. And I'm going to show uh, how to do it with a mocajete and then we're just going to, to, to save time, I'm going to go ahead and move towards a, a coffee grinder. I want to measure out how much this yielded just to be sure and then uh, we'll be good to go. All right, so we're going to take each tray here and we're going to carefully uh, allow the kernels to kind of roll out without spilling a whole bunch on the floor because they like to roll and bounce around and uh, they don't want to mess on the floor and of course we want the kernels so we can make our cornmeal so and I want to put this on a piece of paper um, just dem demoing to you how I'm doing this I've got some newspaper here and I'm going to just kind of uh, roll these out on there and I'm going to grab my bowl a dry bowl and then I can take my newspaper which tends to have already a natural fold and I can fold it up I'm off camera so I can take the corn here that I poured onto the newspaper and I can fold it with the natural crease and hold one in and then I can move my container over and then I can use the crease to help me funnel the kernels into the container. So that's kind of how I'm doing this to avoid making a mess and having too much troubles and issues with the kernels and stuff. So that's my process for getting transferring the kernels from the trays into um, our bowl. Okay, so we transferred uh, our kernels from our dehydrated trays to our bowl here, and we started out what I think I say about 10, approximately 10 cups of raw kernels, fresh kernels. This came down to just shy of five cups, four and a half cups um, once dehydrated. So, uh, corn is filled with tons of water. So, this is what we got to work with. And it should be enough, I mean, to create a decent amount of cornmeal for, for my purposes and stuff. But, um, but there you go. I mean, if you, if you 
did uh, 24, if you did two dozen ears of corn, you'd have, you know, twice the amount so, of, of dry kernels for cornmeal. So, uh, let's get to grinding. All right, so now we're about to, to grind these um, kernels here. And um, I'm going to show, you know, a traditional or primitive method uh, on grinding these in case you don't have a coffee grinder or, or other type of processor. Uh, to make to speed up the process now again primitive means first not necessarily worse and we have modern conveniences because it saves time and energy okay it's about caloric uh, output versus caloric input um, so uh, this takes a little bit of elbow grease takes a little bit of time uh, but uh, when you, all you have is time you might as well make use of it so basically this is a, a mocajete which is a uh, pre-Spanish uh, Mexican uh, mortal, mortar and pestle made of volcanic stone. I'm not quite sure what this is made of actually, uh, to be honest, but I bought this uh, at a uh, Latino store. Um, you can get them in most any uh, store, I think like a Whole Foods high-end store or, or uh, patronize your local uh, Latino store. They most likely will have a mocajete and many times they come in different sizes you can get some really big ones some really small ones and you make salsas in these and um you, you, you can grind and mix spices and such like that with these as well so or a mortar and pestle would work as well so or you know a rock and a, a rack and a rough flat stone you do the same thing okay so on 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 top of some leaves or something like a big leaf or something you know big burdock leaf so that you can collect your 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 uh, crushed uh, food stuff. So we're gonna just take a little bit here and just put in a little bit. Just do a little bit at a time because the the kernels are kind of tough. And you're just gonna just start just kind of grind. And you're gonna have to use your kind of elbow elbow grease and kind of push down and um, turn it. Is what I like to do. I like to push into the sides and turn it. Push into the sides and turn it. And you can kind of rotate this. And see, and doing it this way by hand, you can make the um, your cornmeal as fine or as rough as you like it or need it. Um, so, oftentimes, a uh, mush, like just a real simple food, can be made uh, by grinding up your corn and putting boiling water over it. It's kind of like oatmeal, and it can be rough uh, if you want it. You have bits and pieces of corn in it, you know, whole corn in it, or you can make it real fine. If you have uh, pre-teething babies, or even babies with no teeth, or rather, babies that are teething or babies with no teeth, you can make some food, some corn mush that they can eat, they can digest by grinding up the corn like this. So, I just don't want to make this too long because I can keep going on and on and on. But I hope you get the idea. You can invest in one of these and, um, you know, Put TV on, or put your 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 earbuds in. Listen to audiobook. You know, listen to my videos. Uh, watch. You know, just you know, you can always make time, make use of your time while you're just watching TV or doing something else. Uh, passively, you can just be grinding up your your cornmeal. So this is how you do it with a mocajete. Um, we're gonna move over to uh, just using a coffee grinder. Okay, so I was able to grind this up pretty good. For my intents and purposes using the mocajete, this would be pretty good cornmeal. It's really rough, be good for breading, uh, for fish, uh, or, or hush puppies or something like that. So, um, mocha, using the mocajete, you know, if you don't want to pull out your modern, modern tool, you can certainly use, do it by hand. So, this turned out pretty well. We're gonna put this over here in our bowl. We're gonna set this aside. Now I just have my uh, coffee grinder that I don't use for coffee. Uh, now if this is all you have and you use it for coffee, just clean out really well. You might have a little coffee residue, but um, 
you know, I understand not everybody has the resources or means to, to have multiple coffee grinders. Um, I get it. So, um, basically, with this type of coffee grinder, and this is a Mr. Coffee Coffee Grinder brand, uh, I just take, I have a little dispenser here, and I just pour maybe one or two scoops of my uh, raw, of my dried kernels in the coffee grinder. And then, the way that this works, I have it, you have a little button here, and you just press it down. And sometimes I like to shake it up a little bit. Make sure I'm getting it all. And then, doesn't take much. But it, 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 it makes really kind of fine cornmeal, okay? So this is a real fine cornmeal. Uh, versus what you would do with a mocha hete, which you could get it this fine, it would just take longer. So depending on your taste, um, if you have the luxury of having both, then you could probably even combine both if you wanted kind of a blended texture. So what the next next thing I'm going to do is um, I have a sifter. You don't have to do this, but um, I want to be I want to be thorough. This is an optional step, but I have a little sifter here, and I just take this and I can pour my cornmeal in here and then I can sift it and then what I get left is uh, some of the meal or cornmeal that didn't necessarily break down all the way and still pretty pretty big and again you may want that in your cornmeal and that's okay if I want to be, break this down to be really fine I'm just going to separate this out and I can run this through the grinder again uh, if I wanted to. So I'm just going to collect a bunch of this as I go through um, the kernels that I have here and then I'll just run this through again and just give it one more pass and be done with it. I'm not going to be too uh, anal about it. So that's really it. Um, I'm not going to bore you with going through you know all four and a half five cups of the kernels and grinding them up. Um, I will circle back at the end. Okay uh, all in all our uh, 12 ears of corn, six ears were cooked, six ears were raw, uh, yielded approximately three cups of cornmeal. Uh, and those were eight inch long uh, ears of corn of, uh, for the most part on average. So, you know, I mean, it's, it's not a terrible amount of work. Um, and if you want some fresh cornmeal that smells good, and cornmeal is relatively cheap. I mean, it's not like you're going to save a whole ton of money, but at least um, you know that there, you know what's in it. Um, it's something you can do with your kids so that they know where food comes from and not just the store, uh, and how can, how you can process it. And uh, yeah, now you've got some cornmeal that uh, you can do all kinds of stuff with. Um, it works just like regular old store-bought cornmeal. Uh, let's see, so for storage, as a, on, a, on a note, so I gotta have an old can here that I have some uh, cornmeal already made. And um, I would recommend getting some uh, silica uh, packs. Uh, and you can get these online. And uh, these are just, these are gonna take the moisture out. They're gonna help get rid of the moisture in your, um, in your dry stuff, so when you're drying herbs and different things. And I had to learn that the hard way. I, I harvested, I had a probably about two and a half cups of um, cattail pollen that I had harvested. That was hard fought over a couple of years. And when I went to go use it for a recipe, um, there was mold in it. So obviously there was moisture that got trapped in there and um, it was uh, no good to me. And um, I probably would have been able to save it had I thought to put silicon packs in there. So I got a pack of 50 online here, and um, I'm going to just add silica packs to my stored uh, cornmeal. So I'm not quite sure how long this will keep, but uh, I, you know, we'll, we'll we'll see how it goes. But at least in a pinch, if you want to make some muffins, some some uh, Johnny cakes, and whatnot, uh, cornbread, there you go.